By soaking their chests, they can collect a little water to lick off back at the roost. But this is probably the most dangerous thing they'll ever do. Australian freshwater crocodiles. Warmed by the summer heat, they are at their most alert. A crocodile's jaws snap shut in the blink of an eye. The bat's reactions must be quicker. They must choose a spot and run the gauntlet. The survivors will brave the river every day until the monsoon rains break, which must be soon. But nothing goes to waste. The death of a hippo provides a meal for the river's most fearsome and efficient predators, the Nile crocodile. Growing up to five meters in length, these crocodiles hunt and scavenge. That is a lot of crocs. Mm. Yeah. A hippo carcass just down the river from the studio is instantly set upon by these voracious reptiles. This is about 100 meters in front of us, a classic Luangwa scene. A dead hippo in the water and about 30 crocodiles. What's amazing is that there are two or three hippos that are coming in and actually trying to force the crocodiles off the carcass. Obviously, mum would be one of them. There seems to be a whole gang that are trying to force the crocs off while they tear this thing to pieces. So it's pretty primeval, the whole thing. Hippos and crocodiles normally coexist peacefully, but crocs will take every opportunity to prey on a weak animal or scavenge a dead one. We've seen one or two of these hippos doing these big yawning displays, which is really a threat to the crocodiles. They're trying to drive the crocodiles off with this big yawn and you know, sharp teeth and everything, but the crocs obviously are not intimidated by that at all. And the crocs are here in numbers, so that, you know, the hippos have got no chance really of driving them up. Alison Leslie is one of the foremost authorities on Nile crocodiles. She explains to one of the film crew the unique manner in which the crocs feed. If it's a bony chunk, they will literally just crush 2,000 pounds per square inch. They will just crush everything until it's in a, in a sort of a soft enough condition that they can just swallow. And if it's a chunk of, say, for example, skin or innards, they just fill their mouth and shake and shake and shake until this food 
literally slides down their throat. There's some sort of hierarchy there. They rely on each other to actually grab onto either end of a piece of prey and then they rotate in opposite directions. So although to us it looks like this mad frenzy and splashing and going on, there's actually a really controlled sort of system in place there. Amazingly so. Everybody's concentrated in the areas. The hippos are dying off, you know, slowly but surely. And these cleaning machines have come in just to you know, keep the system freshened up. Crocodiles are opportunists. They feed on fish in the river and at this time of year will make the most of any dying or dead hippos. But they will also take advantage of any animal coming to the river to drink. With that sort of number of crocs in an area, obviously if there's an impala on the bank, there's gonna be a number of crocs going for that animal. If we don't get rain, I think there's gonna be a bit of an uproar in some of these areas. So for the thirsty animals, this croc infested river is as dangerous as it is necessary. For the calf and his mother, going back is not an option. Briefly, he finds a foothold. Then panic sets in. Crocodiles deliberately select particular victims. Mother and calf have no room to maneuver. The mother is grabbed. The calf is swept away. The current is so strong that the crocodiles can't fight it. Only a rock stops their struggles. The calf, too, is battling for his life. Crocodile's hold is awkward. Reinforcements arrive. The crocodile is tiring and has to change its grip. Miraculously, the mother is relatively unharmed. The calf tries to keep his head above water. The crocodile is exhausted. It has to let her go. Mother and calf rejoin below the rapids. Together, they make it ashore. Others are not so lucky. seen a really good sized crocodile slide into the water and I'm just trying to get a handle on where it is. It's even more gloomy and sad. 
sinister now. Oh, I see it. I see it. Our super giant croc up ahead of us. He is a true monster. I'm having to do all I can to keep my heart rate down. The last thing I want is for him to sense any fear from me. crocodile of this size could be 50 years old and would have no trouble taking an adult wildebeest or me. This is the closest I've ever been to lying alongside a dinosaur. Massive male makes for the surface. But simply takes a breath and heads straight back down towards us. It's coming after us. It's following us along the bottom. males battle to dominate their territories. He clearly sees us as a challenge. We've no choice but to risk a dash for the surface. Was without a doubt the most frightening experience I've ever had with an animal. If undisturbed, wildebeest can drink eight litres in a single session. his confidence builds, he is oblivious to what lurks beneath the surface. The herd is bewildered. Some have never seen a crocodile before. Even as the full horror unfurls, there is great confusion about just what is going on. And that was just the first attack. Three hundred hungry crocodiles live in the Grumeti River. Uh, uh, 
wildebeest react differently to crocodiles and other predators. Even the adults seem unsure of just how much danger they're in. The calf's desire to quench his thirst overcomes any fear he may have. The crocodiles maneuver around them with surprising ease. They are intelligent hunters plotting their attack with precision. at any time. Despite the carnage, the mother and calf survive. They stampede back onto the plains. For the baboons, it's more like a spectator sport. They might as well settle down. A single croc can take some time to overpower its victim. But crocodiles are cooperative feeders. They work together. The death roll breaks the prey into bite-sized chunks. But aggression can spill over. Oh. 